Krishna. I would like to put it at the same time. And it's going to be the difference between freedom and communism. So we better get the people that we can. If they can get to the Walmart and Lowe's, they can get to the polls. But y'all pray for me. Well, Johnny, let's remember a lady in my mother in law. It's like she's given up since the age of nine. Y'all just pray for her. May God accept her. Brother John, do you need to make any prayers in remembrance? She's from Veteran. She got um, she got the stuff she needed. So she's going for her third treatment too. She said she's yeah. keeps it. Amen. 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 Anyone else? Brother John, I'd like to remember my family in prayer too. Trust the Lord and his prayer. Pray for my brother. I'm concerned with Diane and his loss. But you know, every time I hear something from her, I'm hearing God bring up so often. And it's not the wrong way. Frankie well, got to come home Wednesday and I said, Your dog was holding that. He said, Thank God. Thank Amen. God. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Continue to remember Frankie in our prayers. We know he's been on a long road of recovery, but you know, I know God's got his hands on to take care of him. Now, but, but also, uh, I know Brother Aaron and Sister Linda might get that, so let's pray, pray for them. You know, I know he still he gets up and goes, but the Lord lets him and helps him do it, but you know what? Brother Aaron went through a whole lot this past year, and I know yeah. Cece's health started to start get a little bit weak, too, so y'all remember me. Yeah, Brother Johnny, I think that's what it is now. It's her big swelling and everything. She's having problems. So it's, she's pretty much his, uh, his feet steps right now, so that's pretty bad. So let's remember him in prayer. Anyone else? Oh, Chris, go ahead. Just remember my home and my kids, my wife, especially Kristen. She had her full wisdom, wisdom teeth pulled. And they didn't send her with the medicine, so she's been hurting all weekend. Oh, yeah. Just remember her. You sure will, brother. You sure will. Um, Y'all remember me and my family. And, um, remember my son, Stevie. I got a special request there that I'm going to put on off. Thank you, baby. Because you're the devil that come with my family. When he does go with my family, I'm going to stick God. Hey, man. Amen, bro. You know? But the way things is going in America right now with the law enforcement, you do right and they call you wrong. So I'm going to put God on that whole situation. Yeah, amen. Yeah. I'm not going to go into detail on what it is, but I know one thing. My God is bigger than anything. Yeah. 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 I'm going I'm to claim victory on that right now. Yeah. Y'all just remember Steve in your prayers. Remember his family in your prayers. Because I know the devil's going to keep coming out until they get the house of God and they get their life right with God. They know I, I know what a sister the other week and the two things happened to her family. That was no accident for little Bobby. And I don't want to see some type of situation like that happen to one of my children or my grandchildren because of the disobedience will not come in the house of God and serving God. So y'all remember me prayer. Anyone else? All about what, man? Yeah. Oh, Lawrence, lead us in the Lord's Prayer. all right, get our ush ushers come up, take up our morning offering.
His heart is breaking as he waits for you to watch you breathe from every I'm going to sing a few minutes ago about the Potter Valley. Pretty much the Lord was with a claim. God's the one that makes us into what we are. Amen. Right. And Jack already had the Potter's house picked out. So. Mm -hmm. Unless we want to go to the Potter's preach on clay or wreck. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Amen. Boldness. Get this right. <laughs> Sometimes we just put words in songs, Brother John, and you 
And you were saying that a while ago, the words just fall right in place with this right here, you know. That's, that's the type of moment I've done with my son's life right now. You know, I just got a word right now for him. Because I know how the devil can come at you. Y'all just please pray for him. Because number one, he needs to get his life right. And he needs to get in church. He's a good boy. He's a good father and a good husband. But you know what? As many folks as being good, it's, it's split hell wide open. Because I want to make sure the boy's heart's right. Amen. I know he's not in church. I know he's not serving my Savior right now. And God God knows that he, he, he's got to be in church. He needs to be serving God. And I just want God to be able to mold his heart, you know, mold his little family's heart. Yes. I want the kids to be able to come to church. Come on, God. They don't take them at home on iPads and on video games and worried about other things in this world. They need to be coming to serve my Lord. So y'all just remember me praying. Yes, I am. Praise the Lord. Thank you. 
this, thank God, is all because of Calvary. Yeah. That's the reason why I'm here. Amen, brother. No doubt that's the reason you're here. <coughs> because of what happened yonder 2,000 years ago on Calvary's Hill. And Jesus gave his life that you and I could have life. He died that we could live. And I didn't start living until I got saved. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. You didn't start living until you got saved. But boy, when you think about the love that he showed for you and I. That's right, amen. How in the world can people not be faithful? How in the world can people not be dedicated? You know, you can sit at home and say, I love the Lord all you want to. But praise God, I believe it comes a time when you, the Bible teaches us to go to church. Mm -hmm. And this crowd out here says you don't have to go to church every time the doors are open. Well, what if we said that and we did we say, well, we ain't going to church tonight. We call an off service tonight. We ain't going to church Sunday morning. We call an off service Sunday morning. That's the way that crowd thinks. Yeah. And I got news for you, bless God. I'm saved. God made me a new creature. And I have a desire. And when you quit having that desire, you know where you're at? You're backslid. Yeah. You ain't go backslid. You're not backslid. Yeah. When you lose your desire for the things of God and going to church to worship God, you are backslider. Amen. If you ever been That's right, amen. Brother, you got that crowd out here that says, uh, well, if you're saved, you don't have to tell nobody about it. That's personal between you and God. Yes, it's personal. Mm -hmm. He's our personal Savior, and I'm his personal son. Yeah. But I got news for you. God says, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall what? Not be ashamed. Amen. And if you're ashamed of the Lord Jesus Christ, then God said, I'll be ashamed of you Amen. when it comes to judgment. Yeah. I'm not ashamed of the one that loved me enough to die for me. No, I'm not ashamed of the Lord Jesus Christ, the only name given unto heaven whereby men must be saved. But I'll tell you, children, we're getting into some perilous times now. We entered into some perilous times. And Jesus is wrong the words I believe coming. Yes. We're not going to see some awful things before he does come. But I'll tell you, it's getting bad out there right now. It's getting bad. It's getting pretty rough. All because of political beliefs. And I'm like Brother Graham said yesterday. Brother, it ain't a political situation that's going to calm the storm. It ain't a madness that's going to calm the storm. Amen. It's going to be the God of Isaac and Abraham and Jacob. That's Amen. God. Yeah. Amen. He didn't say if you call on the Baptist or the Methodist or the Pentecostal or the Presbyterian or the Catholic or whatever, I'd heal you your land. No, bless God, Second Chronicles 7, 14 says, listen, if we as God's people are yeah. saved by the grace of God, we'll humble ourselves down and repent of our sins. Brother, we want to bypass that. Amen. You can't bypass that. I'm not throwing that scripture. Amen. Yeah. God said to humble ourselves down. Amen. God said to repent of our sin. Right, amen. And I noticed the prayers that was going up up there yesterday. I said, watch them. <coughs> they were repenting of their sin. Amen, brother. Brother, listen, don't never let the devil get you in that religious bracket that you think, oh, I don't sin no more. Mm -hmm. Brother, God done told you what you are. Yeah. God says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Amen. There's not one perfect kid. He was, in, he was here, but he's in heaven now. And that was Jesus. Brother, when you get to the point you think you're so religious, you think you're so righteous, you think you don't need to pray no more, you don't need to go to church no more, you're just in a bad, you're in a bad situation. Yeah, you know? yeah. You know what I call a backslider? They between a rock and a hard place. Yeah. And that's bad. You ain't serving God and you can't get all the way out in the world. You're just in a mess. Yeah. And you don't have to live in a mess. 
Get right with God and live to God all the way. <coughs> what a God we serve. Yeah. They talk about I just want to praise Him. That's me. I just want to praise Him. I just want to give Him glory. Because He's worthy, that's the reason. Yeah, yeah. He's not a God when I decide I want to go to church. He's not a God when I decide I want to do the right thing. No, he's God whether or not you do it, don't yeah. He's still God. Bless him more. And praise God, yes, Deacon, he always will be. Amen. He said, I'm God, I'll never change. Brother, some people change quicker than the weather does. Yeah. One day they up, and the next day they down. The next day they what next day they in, the next day they out. Just God, that mind me why I used to do with y'all I remember like, yo yo. Yeah. Brother, some people are like a yo yo. We got yo yo Christians. One day they up, next day they down. One day they in, next day they out. You know how you play the yo yo business? You got a lot of Christians like that. A lot of people like that. Yeah. I'm glad, thank God, brother, it's a whole lot better if you learn how to run that yo yo and make it get up here and just stay here. Yeah. You can do that. Make it just sit there and spin. Yeah. Amen. But praise God, I'm glad when God saved me, God put a desire in my heart. God gave me a new nature. Amen. Behold, I make you a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. The only thing some people know in you is a new car, a new this, a new that. Bless God, I want you to know, praise the Lord, when God saved you and God saved me, He made us a new creature. Amen. Old things have passed away. Don't keep going back there and trying to drag them out to the den, drag them out to the dust. Leave them out. God said it's not good to even speak of those things that's done in the past. Let them stay out there. Yeah. Go. Praise God. It's, it's good to be here this morning. Amen. We'll pray for those that with us. Sister Ned and Sister, her husband, he's going to take her to the doctor this morning. She was sick, couldn't get out of bed. So you know you don't never know. But thank God for those that can get up and come to church. Yeah. And I believe if you're saved and you love the Lord, you'll want to go to his house. Amen. That couple has not missed a service. This is the first service they've missed since they've been in church, since they got saved. Mm -hmm. Because I know with all of my heart that desires are enough to be here this morning. Yeah. And that's what I call providentially hindered. Yeah. Providentially hindered when you can't. You want to and you can't. But yet your heart grieves and your heart cries. I would love to be at the house yeah. of God this morning. Oh, I wish I could have been there. Oh, thank God for the love that we have for Christ. And oh, thank God for the love he had for us. And you know something, church? God loved back then. And God loves now. Yes, because why? Because God is love. Yeah, brother. The definition of G-O-D is L-O-V-E, -E, love. Oh, Byron, one of the most simple verses of the Bible that we've heard quote so many times, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten. And I want to put that begotten. Amen. The NIV Bible just left that out. Just like a bunch of them left out the Pledge of Legion to the and, and left God out of it. Mm -hmm. Well, that's bad. They don't want God in nothing. But thank God for those that do want God in Amen. Amen, Brother Lottie. And I want God in everything. Without God, we ain't nothing. Amen. Amen. We're hopeless. We're helpless. How many, how many remember the time when you was climbing up the rope side of the mountain? Don't you remember that time? Oh, yeah. Some of you may be in here this morning climbing up the rough side of that mountain. And feel like you just, by the grace of God, you holding your head up, put one step ahead of the other. Yeah. God's strength is sufficient. Amen. God's grace is Amen. sufficient. God said over in Psalms 121, I look unto the hills which come at my strength. My strength and my help coming from God. Yeah. He is my helper. He's my strength. I'm going to tell you something, church. If the devil can come around and zip your joy, he zip your strength. Yeah. Because our joy is our strength. Okay. That's right. 
Our joy is our strength. I don't mean you've got to go around laughing all the time. That ain't what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the peace of God that lives in my heart and lives in your heart. That's our strength. That's our joy. Amen. Let's go to the book of Acts. God bless his precious word here this morning. The book of Acts, chapter 7. Book of Acts chapter 7 and verses 31. No, verses 30, a little bit on verses 32. I mean, thir verses 30. Chapters, Acts chapter 7. And I, uh, I want to read a couple of words right in verses 30. Maybe the whole verse. It says, And when 40 years were expired, there appeared to him in the wilderness from the Mount Sinai, an angel of the Lord in the flame of the fiery bush. The fiery bush. When Moses saw it, he wondered at that sight. And as he drew near to behold it, to look at it, looking at it, what in the world? What in the world? Here I am in the backside of the desert. And all that was in a bush, it goes to burning. I didn't burn it. I didn't have no matches. But yet there was a bush. It was burning. And he draw an eye. And he was amazed at it. Just like you and I would have been amazed at it. Mm -hmm. And he says, And saying, I am God. In the midst of that burning bush, a voice come out of that bush saying, I am God. Moses, I am God. I'm the creator. I'm the great I am. I'm God, Moses. I'm God of the fathers of thy, I'm the God of thy father. The God of Abraham and the God of Isaac. <laughs> and the God of Jacob. In other words, bless God, he was God. God he was a creator. He was a great idol. Yeah. He's everlasting to everlasting. Amen. He's one that has no end, has no Amen. beginning. He's God. Amen. Amen. The God of Jacob. Then Moses trembled and doth not behold. Then said the Lord unto him, Put off thy shoes of thy feet, for this place where thou standest this holy ground. Yeah. Moses, put off your shoes. You're standing on holy ground. Yeah. Bless God. He's standing in the presence of a holy God. Yes. Boy, ain't people lost so much respect for God this day and time we live in. Amen. They don't respect God. They don't respect God's house. They don't respect God's people. What a shame. Oh, we've drifted so far away from the things of God, it ain't even funny. Mm -hmm. so Moses, put off thy shoes. I stand on holy ground. I have seen, I have seen the affliction of my people. The boy saw the burning bush begin to talk to Moses. He says, I have seen Moses standing there. No doubt, dumbfounded as he could be. But he had enough sense to, believe, to know who that voice was. Mm -hmm. Brother, you ever listen? If you love God and you walk in close to God and you're serving God with all your heart, you can know the voice of God. Yeah. Amen. You know when God's speaking to you. Amen. I believe there's people standing in the house of God during all the call. They know that the Holy God is speaking to their heart, but they sit and quench the Spirit. They rebel on God and say, no, I'm not going to be obedient. I'm not going to do what God you tell me to do. I'm going to stand here and I'm going to do just like I want to do. Amen. And walk out that door. God said it's better to never heard my word than to hear it not do it. Amen. I have seen I have seen the affliction of my people which in Egypt, which is in Egypt, and I have heard their groaning 
Don't you reckon God's heard the groaning of America's Christians and the morals Christians today? Yeah, amen. Yeah. <laughs> I believe he has. I believe God heard the groaning of his people up there in Washington history. Amen. Over 10,000 of them up there. They said, where was the, where was the riders at? Where was the hecklers at? It wasn't running for them. Amen. Christians have done, took over the park. Praising God. Praying to God. Calling on God. And that's what we all better start doing. Amen. Yeah. We all can take it. Listen, we may not all got to go to Washington District, but praise God, honey. We were at home praising God. We were at home praying. We were at home. Me and my wife sat on the front porch, and I had to I had no internet. And I was playing it, and they was praying, and boy, the Spirit of God got on us on that front porch, and we had a prayer meeting on the porch. Amen. And praise God. We were giving God the glory. Boy, you could feel the unction of the Holy Spirit Amen. come down on that porch. And praise God, all we could do was stand there and get, just sit there and cry. Amen. Thanking God for the love and the Spirit of God. And God said, if my people, which are called by my name, would humble ourselves down and for, ask God to forgive us of our sins, God said he would hear our prayers. Yes. And he'd hit our land. Amen. And that's our only hope, church. I mean, bless the Lord, think about this. If God don't intervene, brother, in the next few weeks and must go and come up on us, honey, where in the name of God is our children going to stand? That's right. Amen. What's going to happen to our children? Yeah. The social communist liberals is right here trying to teach our children against the laws of God, against the Constitution of the United States. <laughs> teach them all this other ungodly mess. Teach them how to hate our law enforcement officers. Teach them how to hate our churches. That ain't of God. Brother, listen here. You can take a child and get it in a classroom under a liberal communist teacher and brother, they can walk their minds. Amen. Instead of being out here keeping them at home and trying to cover them at home, they should have them in the house of God on Sunday morning. Amen. I wonder what happens when they come up and get drugged up. Get out here and all this happens to them. Brother, listen here. God says raise up a child in the way it should go. It might depart, but it would always have the option to come back. Yeah. Amen. 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 I have heard their groanings. God says, Moses, I've heard the groaning of my people. What is he talking about? He was talking about the children of Israel down in Egypt to Egyptian bondage. Yeah. 430 years. They down there with their backs bent over in them pits, uh, making brick and uh, stomping mud and straws. And they were down there in bondage of slavery for 430 years. And listen, God heard their cry. Yeah. Amen. It's like God is not in heaven asleep. God hears the cries of his people. Yes. And one day, God's going to say, Son, Son, it won't be Moses, it's going to be Jesus. Mm -hmm. God's going to say, Son, I see the cry of my people. I see what they're going through with you. Son, go get them and bring them home. Son, son go bring my children home. Amen. Let me tell you something. Yeah. God, He cared for Israel, He cared for His people then. But when you got saved, you become a spiritual Jew. We are God's people. And God loved His people then. Yes. He had concern over them then. He had compassion over them then. And brother, He says, Moses, go down yonder and get my people and bring them home. Bring yeah. them out. Yeah. Take them to the land of Canaan where there's milk and honey. And I'll never be took care of. God's giving that same invitation today. God's saying, children, wake up. God's saying, sinner friend, I love you. The Bible says over there, I believe it's in, in Acts, in Romans 5 and 8, why we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Yeah. Listen, as much as we see ungodliness going on out here, much as we see writing going on all over our country, a holy God in heaven is looking down and saying, 
I have blessed America for 200 and something odd years. I've blessed that nation and look at them now. But yet in all of his sovereign grace and all of his great godly mercy, he ain't looking down the lies of confusion. He knows. He's looking down and seeing all of this is going on. Parents turn against children. Children turn against parents. And he's saying, I love you. Oh, what a love. If they would just only repent, humble down and repent, I'd forgive their sins. And they could have a home in heaven. Regardless, listen, we were all sinners, lost without God. Yes. Amen. And if God hadn't loved you enough to forgive you of your sins, we'd still be lost and could be in heaven. Amen. Place. Yeah. But regardless of what's going on, we have a tendency in this place, in our mind. We have a tendency to get angry. We don't like. We don't like what's going on. We hate what's going on. But if the people was right with God, it'd be different. If they was right with God, it'd be different. Instead of having a sign up four by four saying, I'm going to hell and proud of it, they'd say, God loved me enough that I'm going to heaven. You see, you didn't see nothing like that in that whole crowd up there yesterday. So God's people together. God's people come together and begin to call on the holy and the righteous God. Church, God loves us today. Amen. For God so loved you and I that He gave His best that we could be saved yes. and have each other. Amen. We love you this morning. Have we found ourselves kind of falling short in dedication? Have we found ourselves kind of falling short of our love for the Lord as much as He loved us? I could see Brother Johnny and Brother Junior they stand up here and said, I just want to praise Him. That's all God wants us to do is love Him and worship Him. Amen. Has that become so hard for some people? Has that come so hard that you can't really praise Him for what He's done for you? He loved Israel enough to say, Moses, I've heard their cry. I've heard their groaning. And the same God that heard their groaning, he's the same God that loves us today. Amen. He loves you and he loves me. And you know what I believe would be really a appropriate thing to do this morning in this church? If we'd all, as a whole in this church, we'd come around this old-fashioned altar I believe in the altar of God. Abraham, when he built, he built an altar and he built everything around him. So I believe in the altar. Does everybody in this church go around this old altar and say, Lord, I want to exercise Sacred Chronicles 714. My people, which are called by my name, will humble ourselves down and repent. <coughs> Brother, let's go. We couldn't go to Washington, but we're here at this church. We can never want it, can and will, if you able to get around this old altar and say, Lord, help our country. Lord, help our families. God, help everyone. You know the need of every heart. You know the need of every heart. That's it. Come on. Let's all come together. Let's all come together. Our Heavenly Father, God, as we come before Thy Holy Divine Presence, we come in Jesus' name. Father, we come thanking You, Lord, for this time that we can stand here and proclaim Your precious words. God, You cared for Your people then. God, we know that You care for Your people now. God, we know You love us, Father. God, You've done something for us that no one else ever done. You gave Your Son, Your only begotten Son, to die on a cruel cross called Calvary, that we can be saved, forgiven of our sins, and have a home in heaven with you. And Father, we pray for our nation. I pray for our leaders. God, you teach us in the word, go pray for our leaders. And God, we pray for them. God, you said if we repent of our sins, you'd, you'd hear our prayers. And 
God, we repent of our sins. Anything in our life that's displeasing to thee, Father. God, we claim the blood and forgiveness right now for Lord Jesus Christ. Bless my brothers and sisters. Bless everyone here this morning and bless all of our families. God, we'll thank you, Lord, and we'll praise you. Save that soul your eternity. Bless the peace of Israel. Give us a good safe day in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Church is born. Must be much in prayer for our country. God's got his hand on our country. Yeah. I remember me and my wife sat on the porch a while back. And it wasn't long after President Trump went to office. How that God's people was praying that God would spare our country. Yeah. God put that man in office. Yes, sir. Now, you may not agree with that this morning, but that's your privilege to agree or disagree. And I don't get mad at you if you disagree. I just pray for you. Amen. But God put that man in office Amen. and said that the, the devil would come against him. But God would protect him. Yeah. God would protect him. Yes. And God has protected him. And if God's will, God answers our prayer. I pray that God will see fit to put that man in for at least four more years. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. To be God's will. Yeah. Yes, Lord. And I was kind of praying and talking to my wife about that supreme selection that he was going to make. There was about five of them. And I said, Lord, let Judge Janine be one of them. <laughs> she's, she, she's on there. She's straightforward, but she knows she hasn't been to judge in law for a long time. Yeah. But I tell you, I said, well, I hope she'd be one of them. But I believe the one he speaks of is. She's a Christian. She loves the Lord. She Amen. loves the family. And uh, she's a mother of seven children. So she, that means she's got to be patient. But she's got to stay gone all the time. But anyhow, it's good to be here this morning. Y'all pray for me and I'll pray for y'all. And all of our sick and the Lord. I love you. And I hope you have a good day and a good week coming up. Come to the service Sunday night and the Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. So anything else before we dismiss? I will say it's good to see each one. Good to see Norman with us this morning. Good to see all of you. So I hope you have a wonderful day. Y'all pray for me and I'll pray for y'all. Yes. Let us all stand. Let's go to this message Amen. God bless you. Love you all.